Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've actually got Tamiya's old, when we say old, old and look golden, one to 100 scale space shuttle. Now, a lot of people probably don't realize this kit even exists. It was available many years ago. In fact, this thing started out, I do believe, in 7980 uh, with the initial release of it. Uh, and then it sort of just goes along and, you know, no one really takes any notice of it and all the rest of it. There is other kits out there. And to be honest with you, I have right next to me the Monster 72nd scale one uh, with the boosters and all the rest of it. It's a full video build on that if you want to go watch that one. Uh, and that is an absolute massive kit. But the detail on it, isn't very good, okay? Tamiya's one actually isn't too bad. And again, it's one of these nice starting kits where it's quite basic, it is old school Tamiya, but actually you can add a lot of detail to this and there is a few aftermarket parts out there if you wanted to add to it as well. Anyway, in the box, you get a rough idea of what you're gonna get. You actually just get the shuttle. So you don't get the actual, the tank or the boosters. It is literally just the orbiter itself, all right? So running around on the box, you can see, uh, there's the one so forget that that's uh, not part of it okay but obviously you do get the shuttle but you get the bay we've got the crew figure okay and then some other parts walking down here this one's obviously an updated version so it does come with six options okay and then we've got a little bit more down on there as well with some of the different areas into it so your kit number for this one is what is it it is uh zero uh it is six zero four two four three eight zero zero so quite an older kit so in the box you are greeted by white plastic as you might have expected so down in here you can see we've got something for uh, the actual internals for the bays we've got the actual wings and it gives you an idea of the size of this even though this is one to 100 scale it's not small as, as I learned very rapidly by doing the 70 second one I didn't realize it was as big as it is until you you actually start to build it there's your internals for the bay uh, that's actually for the tail okay some are down the back end there so we've got some of the actual the engines all right you do get a little stand with it as well which is quite nice all right and then we've obviously got the main shuttle itself so that gives you an idea of how big this thing is okay that's down in there we also get down in here the decals which are really nice as well because you get both types of the decal we'll speak about that in a minute there's a reason for going through that we've got some pre chrome parts i think that's for the internals for the bay and then we get a box so we get a simple hints and tips guide as we get with all the Tamiya stuff. And as you can see, we've got our little booklet. So going through the instructions first, brief history, uh, obviously about the shuttle. I must admit, hands up if you're like me and used to love watching them live on the internet. Always something about a launch. And now we're just blown away with SpaceX coming down and landing again. Anyway, uh, right the way through. So starting off with uh, basically it's taping up, forming up and things like that and getting everything all so inside the main sort of fuselage for this one. We do get a flight deck. So you get the upper flight deck for this particular one with the areas in there. So you've got decals depending on which versions you're doing as well, right the way through on that one. Then it's putting in the rear bulkhead, all these little, which aren't windows, are actually uh, latches and various things for the side areas, things like that. And then the cockpit's being fitted in. Then we've got the nozzles uh, for the actual engines as well. And lovely little detail on this, they're screw fitted in. Okay, nice little touch with that one. Okay, we've got the rear plate as well all of those being fitted in and then the internals into the bay all right being fitted in there then we've got the smaller uh, outer engines being fitted in their little nacelles on the outside okay plumbing all of those in then we got this little guy being made up as well which are going to go in the sides uh, for the various items on this one we'll explain that in a moment okay and those parts all going down in there then we've got the nose wheel going together and again depending if you're open or closed obviously if you're doing it in what well, is it flight i suppose it's space flight uh or obviously gear down depending which well we do get a little bit of detail for the wheel wells as well so those being fitted in okay and then working our way through to say open or closed as you might imagine right the way in those wings being fitted down onto this one and then obviously you have got positionable for the actual rudder at the top if you're going to have it open fully or deflecting one side or the other so it's quite a nice touch here's the thing you do get an arm and it is articulated and does sort of work as well but we'll see that in a second then we got a couple of um uh, modules going down inside okay so these are sort of support modules down on the inside we've got the sort of satellite launcher ring docking ring things like that being fitted down in here all the bits on the inside and the manipulator arm 
Okay, then in the case it's fitting these in, and obviously you can put in what you want into this one, it's quite modular in there. Then we've got that arm system being fitted in, so if you want it in the stowed or open position as you might want right the way in there. Then we've got the outer and inner part of that, the actual doors as well, so depending on if you're going to have the actual uh, chrome parts in there or not, obviously if you're having it open or closed. Okay, and then you've got it fitting up to the stand, so you can actually have a couple of options on the stand, exactly how you want it being fitted, obviously up, down, in between, and all the rest of it, and the arm fitted, okay? So this one down in here, we've got Enterprise. Now, Enterprise never actually went into space, okay? So it's got different windows on the front, which is quite a nice thing. So it gives you a decal option for covering them up, because obviously the version I did is Enterprise, and I ended up having to do it the other way uh, for Atlantis and Endeavour, Discovery, all the other ones, and it's got smaller windows at the front. So you've actually little changes to them. There's a few other things as well, so you're going right the way through, okay? So basically putting all your decals on just like that, and that completes it. Painting wise, again, it's one of those, obviously your black, your white. Again, there is a beautiful decal set available. I used it for the 70 second one. I'll link it down below on this one as well. It's great, and it really does add a proper level of detail to it. And one thing perhaps all of the shuttle kits miss is the tiles going on the underside. Doing them just black just doesn't do them justice. Okay, so down in here, I'll probably show you on the close up be better. You can probably see we've actually got the, the difference, and you can probably see quite clearly the difference between this windscreen and this windscreen. So, obviously, these are big windows, it never went into orbit, so it didn't need them. These are the proper solidly closed up versions down below here and obviously there is some subtle changes in the cockpit various things like that but you're never really going to be able to see those all right the decals again looking very nice maybe a little bit flat but they're definitely thinner than the standard tell me a way of doing it all right so we've got those then we've also got just down in here if i can get into it because we've made a little pouch okay we've got these ones as well for these outer areas obviously for the different instrument panel from the normal one that is obviously Endeavours, um, sorry, uh, um, Enterprises, right the way through. Okay, so that's the one there for Challenger, the various parts. Okay, so into the parts of it. If we start just back here, you can see we've got the main body, and we have over there we've got a little baggie with these screws big old screws i must say i wasn't expecting that big and we've got the rod there these are for that engines on the back so very nice indeed okay okay so bearing in mind this is tamiya older kit so it's not covered in gorgeous surface detail and all the rest of it but you've got all the bits you need it is a mixture of raised and recessed right the way the actual on the body section down on this one but again there isn't much detail to it and that's what i was saying the aftermarket one is very nice i'll grab it before the end and you can see my one okay that i did many many years ago but i still do love it but again it gives you an idea of scale on this thing so with the tail on and all the rest of it you can be about 35 centimeters even in one to one hundred scale so this thing was never small okay but generally good solid parts no sink marks no nothing like that up being a little bit more old school tamia there is a few ejector pin marks around on this one but they're usually tucked out of the way no problem at all okay but having a a bit more of a swizz you can probably see it's got a nice shape to this one a lot of the shuttles out there don't have that sort of correct shape but this one definitely does which is a nice touch okay again on the inside you're devoid of any details whatsoever on this one so i won't worry about it okay then if we do the wings next we do the, the main sort of orbiter first and then we'll work elsewhere <clears throat> Okay, so this is quite nice. You have got some very nice surface texture on the tops of the wings. Hopefully you can see you're catching it in the light there. Very nice. And then obviously on the uppers, no problem at all. That's actually very, very nice. No flash or anything else. Good, solid parts on these one. We just move slightly on the closer. Hopefully you can see it, catch it in the light there. All of that detail. And on the other side, some of the other pits, as you can see, really, it's just a lot of big, flat, quite boring surfaces in a lot of ways. But this is one of those things that makes up a nice model once you are all done. Okay, next up we've got the engines and some of the interior. So we've got the flight deck, various parts. I'm sure I just heard something go. Perhaps it was just a staple. Okay, <clears throat> so again, sprue F. Tiny, tiny, oh no it's not, I thought it's bits of flash but they're not, they're actually supposed to be on there. 
Okay, very, very nice details. And again, you're really sort of getting into the, the lumps and bumps of it now when you're into this stage. Again, it's not, it's got a lot more detail than the bigger 70 second one that I did, the old Revel monogram one. But again, the flight deck looks quite complicated down in there. But again, you're not really gonna see past the windows. The crew, again, a couple of seated crew figures, nothing much going on. And on the blind side, again, all the parts are numbered internally, which is quite nice as well. So it's F24. Again, you don't see that too much these days, but they are on here like that. So that's quite nice. Okay, so we just try and keep this together. We've got the tail. Get in here. Okay, so here we are on sprue E, so we've got the gear, and again, good, solid details on the gear, things like that, no problem at all, and we've got the rudder, so again, you can see those areas catching down in the light, so see, there's nothing really to see on the bigger surfaces, but it's nice, good, solid details on the gear, on that tail, right the way through, very nice indeed, okay, right, into the bay itself, Okay, so again, outer skin. It's got that real chinky sounding plastic to this. It's very nice. So technically down here you've got the nose with the thrusters on there. We've got those shrouds for the auxiliary engines on the outside, auxiliary engines down the side here, and then the bay. So when you flip it over, you have got some nice detail. There is a couple of big ejector pins in here, you know, at the sides. You've got these down the bottom, which you'll be covered up anyway. And you have got a few down on here, but again, this the door system you're going to have these uh, sort of solar arrays onto those as well, so uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem on that one. Again, looking very nice. Okay, so in here we've got the arm, we've got these modules, and we've got a little few poly caps just down in here before they go walk about. We'll just hook those out of the way, so that's quite nice. Okay, and then obviously we've got these areas for the cleats and the various bits and pieces that go on the outside, the modular parts, things like that on here. So that's quite nice. So here we are on sprue H. Looking good. Side parts. So again, all of those details, good, crisp design. Actually, I can't really see a problem with any of that. It's actually looking really very nice, all of it. We've got these here, I won't bother popping these out. You can see they're just literally chrome for the actual parts. So these are these reflectors down here on the side. Okay, and we get a nice little stand, which is in this sort of blue. The only thing is the cockpit glass is blue as well. So don't know if it would be, have a blue tint to it, but they've certainly done it on this one. And you get a stand, which also you could spray solid. You wouldn't have to keep it clear, so forth and so on. So just to give you an idea of what's out there with it all and all the rest of it, it gives you a bit of an idea for scale. So here I've got my 70 second scale one and there you've got the one to 100 scale one. So as you can see, this thing is a lump, but I highly recommend getting the aftermarket decals because that's what we did for this one to give it this fantastic tiled look on it and things like that. But the trouble that you find, or I always find, these bigger scales, it's very difficult for them to not look like a toy, a kid's toy. This does look, still looks like a, a bit of a kid's toy, but um, that is the thing. So you need the decals to break it up and make it go through the motions of it. Something that we worked very hard to do at Atlantis here when we did it, which is almost 10 years ago we actually built this kit. But anyway, I think that is an absolute gem of a kit. It's really nice that it's back in stock. It is back in stock now with PM models, we have got them on a little bit of an exclusive. We actually imported them ourselves into the UK as well. So if you want to grab yourself one of those, pop over to PM Models. I'll link it down below. So there we go. That's Tamiya's 1 to 100 scale. Space Shuttle.